It's time to check out that SH-1 Steve Harris signature pedal from Tech 21. So let's take a look under the hood and see what we got. We'll start in with the EQ section. You've got bass, two mids, and a high. The lows are set at 50 hertz, and then you've got two mids. One set at 500, the other set at 200, and then the highs are at three. I was really surprised that the two mids were set in here. Usually on most processors, you either get a single parametric or you get one fixed mid. And that was one thing that struck me right away with this. I was really glad to see it. I usually don't find fixed mids to always be that great depending on your personal setup or anything, but these are actually really useful settings. And I was surprised how well they worked. Having one mid set at 200, it's a really nice place in the low mids to add that kind of thump and a little bit of grunt to the sound and some thickening of the bottom without going into sub bass to really give some drive and round things out without turning to mush. Now having the other one set at five is kind of the universal carve factor for whether you're gonna scoop out a little bit or if you're gonna push and get a more throaty, woolly kind of sound. So having the option to adjust that so that if you want that scoop, that really modern type of hi-fi thing, you can dial that in here. Or if you have a really scoop sound, being able to push that up a little bit and also how that centering of mids and whether you're adding or pushing affects the gain and some overdrive it's a really useful frequency so having both of them on there was really cool the last part being the highs usually a lot of bass processors will set the highs at kind of an extended range that i don't think is really that useful honestly uh it tends to be like 5k or up and a lot of times that's beyond the range you're really going to hear inside of a mix or something I usually think of the 3K area as kind of being the upper mids, but set as highs, it gives a really nice place to kind of hit that clank, your grind and your cut. That's right in here without being so extended that fret noise gets over enhanced or that type of thing. So again, a really good choice. So I was surprised and really happy with the ones they picked and the centers that they put on these. Now looking at the controls underneath, we have three switches. You have a ground, and then the next one is going to be a defeat for the speaker sim. The speaker sim is actually modeled after Harris's actual 412 cabinets that have the EV12Ls in them. Really interesting choice, and I think kind of a lost one for bass players, so it's really cool to have that cab emulation. But it is defeatable from here. And just a side note, since uh, Tech 21 seems to have access to how these things are profiled and some great cabs and everything, 
not that I would suggest anything or try and prod any of the crew over there or anything for something I might personally want, but, you know, a base cab sim pedal, something like that with the awesome processing they're known for, maybe a... I, I wouldn't want a hint. Wouldn't want a hint. Do it! Just do it! So, moving on. Uh, last, you have the bite switch, which gives that real aggressive clank and upper treble mid-range kind of bite, appropriately named, that you associate with Harris's sound. Really helpful, especially if you're a lighter player or if you're using some compression and it's bringing up your lows. Uh, you can get some interesting results, I found, by actually disengaging the bite and if you have something like active pickups you know emg or something else that you're really driving this with you can round it off add more gain and get close to what you would get with the bite switch in but kind of a smoother top end so there's different ways of skinning the cat and a slightly different flavor so I'd recommend trying it both ways and dialing it in a little bit before you settle with always engaged on bite or not. Now, Tech 21's come out recently with a number of signature pedals. They've done the Doug Pinnock and the Getty Lee, both of which I've covered. I'll put info cards up there. But what I'm glad to see out of this is that they're not relying on kind of one thing that's just redone, like one set of controls, the same thing, and it's just repeating it and kind of slapping an artist's name on it. Apparently, all the artists that these are designed after are actually using them, so that's really cool to see. The other is that each one has kind of a signature setup as well, and I was glad to see that was here with the Harris as well. Not only is having the two mids something different from the other processors, but you also have on this one that's kind of unique is a second channel that's selectable, and while it shares an EQ with the first one, you get a separate level and a separate gain. Now, this could lead to a number of different options being either a separate channel for added gain and distortion or cut back less gain. Maybe you have two bases, one active, one passive. You could set it up so that that equals out the level and input of it. A lot of different ways you could look at it, but it's really cool to have that option in there and as you can tell in the first one, I got two really radically different sounds in the demo part of it by using a lesser gain on the first channel and a higher gain on the second to get a little more classic and clean sound and then the meaner, more modern and distorted kind of high gain tone that I used in the second half of the demo. So to wrap up, final thoughts on this one. I'm really enjoying watching all the signatures coming out. Tech 21 is just killing it lately. They've come out with Again, the Doug, the Getty, they've got the Harris. They just launched a new one, and I hear there's rumor that something else may be coming up, maybe around Nam time, too. If these are coming out, you know I got to have them, so you'll be seeing them here. Make sure you hit subscribe and all that kind of thing so you can catch up. Catch me on Instagram for a couple other clips with this one. But I think that this is a completely different take from the other two, and that if you're looking for something that maybe isn't over the top insane gain, but can add some real crunch and drive when you want it, but a really rich centered classic type of tone, this could do well for you. Uh, it's another one that I thought, you know, being a big Steve Harris fan, hey, I just got to have it because, you know, I grew up on the guy, but it's turned out to be much more useful and versatile than I first thought. And I'm surprised and pretty happy about that. So it's definitely going to be staying on the board. So check it out. I definitely recommend this one. Again, I don't know how they keep pulling this rabbit out of the hat. Genuinely, another great pedal from these guys. And I hope they keep slaying it because this one is one I've tried out. I've used it in recording, got to run it through its paces, and it didn't disappoint. Links down below. Definitely check it out. And finally, as always... Huge thanks to Dale and the crew at Tech 21 for getting these out for me to check out and to demo for you guys. And I'm looking forward to doing more. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Got some other stuff coming up this week, some stuff with uh, pickup comparisons and another metal based microscope featuring Steve Harris. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.